All right, everybody, welcome back to the Heath Barn. Hope we've all had a nice holiday season. It is over now. We are back at it. Uh, this episode, it's a lot of fun. Watched the Illinois men's basketball team play last Friday. Watched them play again against Northwestern. And so I thought it'd be fun to have an episode where I, we, or I kind of talk about the team and I go through the nine guys basically that are getting playing time and I rate them on a scale of one to 10 as far as how good I think they're doing and how much I like them, all that good stuff. So if you like Illinois men's basketball or not, it's a good listen. It's quick, quick episode, easy listen. I rate the Illinois basketball players. It's a lot of fun. So enjoy the episode and let's hit it. All right, everybody. Hope we're having a great day. As I previously stated here, this episode, going to break down the Illinois men's basketball team. Going to put on my analyst hat for a minute here. Am I qualified to be an analyst? I don't know, but I hear some people in Champaign, whether it be radio, social media, whatever, that uh, have the platform to act like they're an analyst. And uh, I don't feel like I'm any less qualified than them. So today, here's what I'm going to do. Going to talk about the team some. Then I'm going to go through their rotation, pretty much their their team, not not the entire team, but the team that you know they're. I believe eight guys. One, two, three, four, five, two, four, six, eight, nine guys. My bad. And I'm going to uh, rate them one to ten on what I've seen so far and how much I like what they're doing, things like that. So they're all going to get a rating between one and ten. So uh, should be fun. I will say this before we get started. Um, They've had two games since Terrence Shannon has been uh, suspended. Uh, I took my son to the game against FDU uh, last Friday night. And then, um, you know, obviously that's not like a big test or anything. But for their first game, it was fun. Sold out crowd. You know, they're into it. Played really well. Started off a little slow, but then they got, they got going and they looked really good. Um, the next day on the way home... We were listening to uh, AM 1400 Sports Talk Radio. Um, I've turned into my dad. But uh, he was big on the AM radio stuff. But uh, So we're listening to that, and um, they had a guy on who uh, does a great job reporting things. Um, and they had him on, and he was you know giving his thoughts on things. But they asked him what he thought a realistic goal was for the team if Terrence Shannon does not come back and he said, well, they just, hopefully they'll just, they just need to try to make the NCAA tournament. And I immediately looked to my wife and I said, I don't agree with that. Like you don't know that they played one game without him. It's been like two days. It's not all doom and gloom just because, you know, they looked fine to, to me. They looked fine the previous night. So for you to just say, well, you know, they're trying to make the tournament, but man, they're not, uh, they can't challenge for the, you know, this, they can't do this. They can't do that. It's like, you don't know you're a reporter. You're a very good reporter. So report things. But I don't care what your opinion is about these about these kind of things. I don't feel like your opinion is any more valuable than anybody else's. So, but in his defense, they asked him the question. So, whatever. But to me, I was like, uh, I don't agree with that. Let's just let it see how it plays out. And uh, you may end up being right, but uh, you you can't say that after two day after like one game in two days. So I thought that was silly. Um, now, uh, I will say this. They've had two games since Shannon's been suspended, and they've looked great. Um, but I will say that it's never quite as good as it seems, and it's never quite as bad as it seems. Uh, when they found out Shannon was, and everybody found out Shannon was suspended, it was like the sky was falling, and to me it was like what's well, not quite as bad as it seems. But Illinois had two games since then, and they've looked great. They've won them both by over 30 points and beat Northwestern, who's not really uh, that bad. And uh, they made them... They just dominated them. So, so now everybody's sky high saying, you know, now I would tell them to uh, have a little caution and say, now it's not quite as good as it seems either because it's only two games. You're going to Purdue on Friday, and that's the number one team in the country. So uh, let's just see how this whole thing plays out. And um, But for now, I will say this, and I've said this the whole time. I enjoy this team 
because they're old, they're experienced, and they appear to be very unselfish so far. And, uh, you know, Underwood and the team, they use the word connected and all this kind of stuff. And they are, you can tell, but, you know, they haven't also haven't lost three in a row either. Like, see if you're still connected after you lose three games in a row, you know, so, because, uh, you know, Big Ten's tough. I know the, the conference is down a little bit, but still, it's going to be tough to, tough sledding to win, you know, games night in, night out. So, we will, we shall see, but I just felt like uh, he was very premature in saying that. But I also think that um, everybody's saying that we're still a top 10 team, even without Shannon. I think we need to just pump the brakes on that, too, and just see how all this plays out. So, but I will, uh, my plan for this episode, I'm going to go through nine guys. And I'm going to rank them all 1 to 10 on how much I like them and how much I have liked how they played this season so far. And kind of give my thoughts on each player. So, see if you agree. Or if you don't agree, or whatever. Leave comments if you don't agree. Leave comments if you do agree. Whatever. But, um, I will start with Marcus Damask. Um, 1 to 10, I'm giving him an 8.5. I'm doing .5s, by the way, in case you can't tell. So, Marcus Damask, I'm giving him an 8.5. I really, really like him a lot. I think he is exactly what I was just talking about. He's old. He's experienced. He's unselfish, but at the same time, he, uh, when he take kind of like against Northwestern, when he kind of like takes that game over, or against uh, FAU when he won that when we won that game, and he had thirty three and he had thirty two against Northwestern. He's not being selfish. He's just he's uh, just being aggressive and, and knowing and being confident and knowing he can put the ball in the basket, knowing he can take his man. I love his uh, uh, booty ball. <laughs> they keep calling it that, which uh, whatever, but. Um, I love the way he can back guys down. I love his mid rage game. Uh, he's been off with threes, but he's, that's the good thing about that is he's still, that's not going to stay like that. He's not, he hasn't been like a great three point shooter in his career, but I think he was like 36% last year, but you can tell that that's not something that's going to keep, keep up like him. He was like two for his last 20 and then he hit a couple. So he hopefully will get going with that, but he's very smart. Um, you know, hard nose. Yeah, I just yeah, I love him. So <clears throat> I feel like eight and a half is a really good score. I do feel like uh, just little stuff like we. It, it's not really even his fault, but Illinois not having a true point guard. I mean, I feel like he gets picked a couple times a game. Just little stuff like that, but uh, um, that's really not his fault because he's. I don't think he's used to bring the ball to the floor. But um, love him. Love what he's doing so far. Love his. Uh, his attitude, he seems pretty, he's not real cocky, he's pretty quiet. That's another thing about these guys, too, that I like more than teams in the past that only have had. Well, I, I don't know, I, I've, well, last year I didn't like the team, but, you know, obviously when I and Kofi were there, I liked them a lot, but uh, they're pretty, you can tell they're old, and they're pretty, like, like mature, you know, they're pretty chill when things are going good or bad, it seems like, so, and uh, Damascus like that, so, love what he's doing so far. We'll see how he uh, responds with the rest of the Big Ten season because uh, obviously it's a little notch up from what he's used to at Southern. But when these guys transfer up, though, man, that doesn't mean that they can't. There's so many mid-majors in the tournament that do well, and so I I don't think it's that big of a deal. And obviously he's showing that because FAU made it to the Final Four last year, and he had 33 against them. So love what he's doing so far. Just keep it up. That's kind of how I feel about him. So eight and a half. For Marcus Damask. Now, Quincy Garrier, I gave him a nine because uh, I just think he's a badass man. I mean, he's like, first of all, he looks like just a grown man out there playing. And he, you talk about a guy that knows his role and doesn't step outside of that hardly at all. And he doesn't care if he gets eight. He doesn't care if he gets 14. He doesn't care if he gets 25. As long as they're winning, that's the way he plays. And he, uh, just so solid. And again, I, I'm not saying like Damask maybe <clears throat> have a bit, a bigger scoring role. He does depending on the night, whatever, it just depends. But that's a good thing about Gary. He's, he's a lot like Damask where just whatever you need that night. And, but he is, I guess I gave him a little bit higher than Damask because, uh, I think he is kind of a lead. Like, I don't know. You can just tell like, uh, Gibbs Lawhorn did something dumb at 
one of those games and he immediately like, put his arm around him and walked him down the court and told, you know, and everything like that. Like, I, I feel like he's just really just an invaluable piece as far as like leadership role player. He rebounds, plays defense, blocks shots. He can hit threes. Uh, just solid, solid dude. So I give him a nine so far and I can see why Illinois tried to get him a couple times before. And finally they got him and, uh, he seems like he's happy to be there. And obviously Illinois is happy to have him. I think he's, him and Damascus are great, and uh, yeah. So I give him a nine. I, I'm, and I think that uh, that Big Ten schedule with him. I mean, he's played at Syracuse and Oregon, and he, uh, like I said, that dude just looks like a grown man playing. So uh, I do not expect the Big Ten uh, physicality to have any effect on him whatsoever. Or Damascus. Damascus is a big, strong kid too. So you know, I think they'll be fine. But yeah, so those two. Eight and a half and nine for Gary. A. Coleman Hawkins, I'm giving a seven. Uh, seven's good. for me. Seven's good for him because he has driven me nuts uh, off, on and off for the his entire career. Because you can just count on him doing three or four stupid things a game. But we're down to three or four though, because it was a hell of a lot more than that. So we're progressing. But uh, he. Um, if he will just realize, okay, look, I'm not going to do anything more than get about 10 or 11 a game. If I can get about eight boards, a couple blocks, play good defense, just know your role. If you're open for a three and you have time to set up and all that good stuff, like you have the last couple games and shoot it, then fine. But anything off the dribble with you, and, and he does that a couple times a game. Like I said, he does a few stupid things a game. That guys playing in their fourth year, of college basketball should not do and he still does that <clears throat> so that's why he's a seven but again about a month ago i would have put him at about a four and a half because he just drove me nuts but um i feel like he's starting to buy into this whole know your role don't try to do too much thing and i don't know if he's buying into it or not but somebody's making it or somebody's making him do it or he's doing it on his own but he has played smarter now We'll see what he does against Purdue because Purdue's a big game. He's one of those kids that can't control his emotions very well. So if it's like a big, he's one of those you just I I don't trust in big games as much because he flips out and not chokes, but you know what I mean. Gets a little too worked up and does some out of character. Just well, you know, just uh, I can see him doing some stupid stuff against Purdue, taking bad shots, a couple bad passes, just you know, because that's how he's always been. If it's been like a big game or something, he gets a little too. Uh, he he doesn't know how to manage his emotions as well as uh, those two previous guys I mentioned, Damask and Gary. A. So we'll see how he we'll see how he plays Friday. But the last couple games he's been more just in the flow, not forcing things. Again, he has a couple times, but uh, not as much as he usually does. But um, you know, defense, block shots, rebound, shoot when you're open, when you're open. Uh, and, you know, just kind of play in the flow, be unselfish. If he just keeps doing that, then he'll be, then, I mean, he's, he's a very valuable player. But, uh, again, I, I'll believe, I think Friday's a big, big game for him to see how he comes out and plays. See if he flips out and changes everything and, or whatever. But, so seven for Coleman Hawkins. Luke Goody, he's next. Seven and a half. Good shooter. Uh, Sometimes he he hasn't hit much the last couple games, but um, doesn't matter. He play, plays his butt off, rebound. I mean, he's just a good role player, smart. Rarely does uh, makes bad decisions. Uh, I mean, he's taking a couple of bad sh- shots, but nothing, you know, big deal. Um, I know that I just said that about Coleman Hawkins and was ripping on him, but with Goody's it actually actually like a shooter. So um, the last couple games since Shannon's been out, he's hasn't scored much, but that's not a big deal. We don't really, you know, he, he plays hard, he gets in there and rebounds. He's a good role player. And, uh, I, I just, you know, and he's another one that is just smart, mature. It's his third, you know, third year now. So I give him a seven and a half. I like how good he plays and there's going to be a lot of games where he's going to, you know, if I feel like these games where they've doubled, it's been Harmon, kind of getting the open shots, things like that. But Goody's going to have a lot of chances to shoot open threes, and uh, he's going to be a big 
really important piece for the rest of the season. So I like how he plays, plays his butt off, like his attitude, like everything. Just uh, so I'll give him a seven and a half, which is very solid. Okay. Ty Rogers, I'm giving it eight and a half as well. I love him. He, okay. That game that I was at with my son on Friday against FDU, he had 10 points, 15 rebounds who for a point guard. You know, he's kind of like a, you know, he, he is, he is. He's basically the point guard. He brings it up. Uh, five assists. Now, he jumps out of the building, plays great defense, amazing rebounder. Um, I just love him. I love how he plays. I love his attitude. He's very mature for just a sophomore. Um. Big, I'm a big Ty Rogers guy, so I give him an eight. It's not more because, again, when he brings it up, he's kind of like the mask. I, you know, he's going to get picked or get it, make a bad pass a couple times a game or something like that, or get it picked, trying to make, get the ball up the floor. And also, um, he's going to have to at some point uh, have a little bit more of an offensive game, like uh, to his game. You know, like uh, I feel like now it's just like little back to the basket post moves and little runners and things like that. Like I haven't seen him shoot like an actual, just like jump shot from 15 feet, like all year. I don't think. And like last year he could, he did that some. So it's like, I don't want him to just think that like, I can't score unless I got my back to the basket or it's a little runner because like, again, like you don't even get to see him shoot the ball, like an actual 15 foot jumper, anything off the dribble, things like that. So that's something that, uh, this year probably doesn't matter, but if he's, you know, next year, he's going to have to take on a little bit bigger role scoring, I would imagine. So I guess that's why I got him in an eight. I'd like to see, again, he doesn't need it on this team as much, but uh, just some, uh, not everything with back to the basket and posting up and, and all that, you know, he's going to have to be able to take a guy off the dribble and shoot a jumper at some point and, and make it. And I think that he used to, to do that some his shot's never been great, but uh, hopefully that'll be something because um, next year, if all these guys are gone, these older guys are gone, he'll be he'll be the man, or he'll be, he already is, does a great job like in leadership, things like that, but uh, so I like to see a little bit more of that, like see him shoot the ball, just, j- just to know that he can still do it, I guess, basically, but um, as far as effort, rebounding, everything, man, I just, I just love him. He jumps. I mean, he's just, he's great. He's a winning player, winning type of player. And everybody has to have guys like that. So I give him an eight. Love him. Uh, Dane Danger, or as my son says, Danger Danger. He, uh, I'll give him a seven. I was going to say six and a half, but uh, his minutes are kind of erratic because it just depends on the matchup. Um, I know they talk about how connected the team is and things like that, but I would keep my eye on him and make sure he doesn't transfer because he gets that look sometimes when he's on the bench and, uh, we're going to need him next year. So, but as far as he, uh, you know, it, he's, again, it just depends on the matchup. He's gonna have to play a lot Friday, I'm sure against Edie, but, uh, I like him a lot. He had like 18 or 19, I think it's FDU whenever we were there. But so, I mean, those are teams that don't have posts. Anybody that could guard him in the post, things like that. He puts the ball on the floor too much around the basket, but um, very smooth, slick around the basket. He's got good post moves, things like that. Um, I like him a lot. That's why I'll give him a seven. But again, the minutes are, are a little bit erratic. Definitely more, definitely more uh, erratic than they were last year. So we shall see. Hopefully he'll, we'll see how connected they are, you know, when the season's over and he is probably griping about his minutes this year. But uh, I do, again, a long way to go, a long way to go. He may get to play a lot more uh, the rest of the season. Who knows? But um, I do like his game and I like him and I hope that he stays and I hope that uh, he keeps contributing. But I'll give him a seven just because... When he is out there, uh, you know, he does his job for the most part. My main thing with him, he does he does put the ball on the floor too much for a, for a post player down there. Just get get to it. Get get to your move. You don't have to dribble all the time. Whenever you are 7 feet tall or 6'10", 6'9", whatever he is, and you dribble, and the ball's at your waist, then you might as well be 5'10", 
because anybody can take it from you. So keep the ball up and get to your move. But uh, I do like Danger, so I give him a seven. Justin Harmon, going to give him a seven and a half. Last two games, he's been lights out. You can tell he's a streaky fella, but he got hot, and when he's hot, he's hot from three. So I think that he uh, played for a much smaller school last year and was kind of the man. So it takes him a while to kind of understand his role and things like that. Uh, I think Shannon uh, not playing, uh, he's kind of the number one guy. I think that's it's changed his role on the team because the last two games he's had – he had 20 against Northwestern. I think he had either 18 or 19 against FDU. So he has obviously stepped it up a lot the last two games. Again, it's only two games. But um, I think that, it. again, he's another guy that's old and experienced. But he, again, he's the man. He's been, he was kind of the man last year for his team at first small college. So he... Uh, is I think now he's kind of getting a grasp on his role, but I think that his role when Shannon was there, it's kind of like danger. It's like, am I going to play 20 minutes? Am I going to play five minutes? You know? And now I think that with Shannon out, he's the main guy that gets an increase in minutes and he's obviously taking advantage of him. Uh, he gets a little teeny bit squirrely sometimes, but again, he's used to scoring a lot and kind of doing, having, having more freedom on offense, I guess. So, but, um, his, uh, he can tell that when he's feeling it, he's he, he's he's a hell of a shooter. So, um, I like him a lot. I'll give him a seven and a half. Um, the two freshmen, Gibbs Lawhorn. I'm only giving him a five, but it's because he you can just tell he doesn't know what he's doing yet. Uh, again, another good example of a guy being the man, always being the man. You can tell he's got a shitload of talent. Sorry, got a lot of talent. But he uh, doesn't understand um, the whole team thing yet, really. But he's getting—you can tell he's getting better, and you can tell the their coaches are on him about it because he's—he's he's, uh, again, he's another one though, man. Don't 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 be whatever after one year in transfer because a lot of these older guys aren't going to be here next year, and you should be learning from them. Don't be one of those guys that just says screw it. And transfers, but I wouldn't be shocked if he does. Hopefully, he won't. Again, we'll see how connected we are whenever we see how many people transfer after the year's over. But uh, he, a um, lot of talent, but uh, you can just even tell, like that FDU game. I was watching like Underwood after he took a couple of those shots because you can tell it's one of those where they're winning by a lot. And he comes in, he's just kind of like, all right, I'm going to get mine. But that's not what that's not what you want to do. You want to just uh, show the coaches that you can. Uh, play the style that they want you to play and defensively too. I mean, it, it takes a lot. Uh, you can tell he's, he's not there yet defensively and he's a little squirrely, squirrely with the ball, but he's got a ton of talent. So that's why I only gave him a five. Cause you just like, he's got to learn uh, what he's doing and it takes time for sure. Especially with Underwood. I think he's, it takes time. You gotta, I think it takes young guys a while to, to, uh, Get to know him, and I also think that's another reason why this year might be a little different because I think Underwood, these guys that are uns, like those are kind of Underwood's kind of guys, just play your butt off, play unselfish, and things like that. And I feel like that might, uh, I feel like Underwood style is good for the older these older players, and the way these older players play is good for him as well. So uh, Gibbs Lawhorn, he just needs to keep his eyes and ears open this year when you get out there. Play the what you know. Play the way they want you to play. Keep growing on defense, and you know all the other stuff because he is very, very talented. Obviously, uh, offensively, in particular. So, and then uh, Hansberry, the other big, the big boy who's a freshman. I'm giving him a six, and he needs the same thing with Lawhorn. Except I, I just feel like he's picked up a teeny bit quicker than Lawhorn has because he came in. I think it was a Missouri game. Had a couple big minutes and uh, looked good. And I think that. Um, he's another one. Stick with it. Don't get all squirrely and transfer after one year. Just because I get to play. Well, uh, just keep learning every day. Keep learning and getting better every day. Learning the system. Learning what Underwood wants out of you. Learning learning what all the coaches want out of you, and just keep on growing. And again, there are going to be a handful of guys that are going to be gone next year that are here this year that are major, major, major parts of the team. So you should get a 
big opportunity next year. Lawhorn and Hansberry. So don't get all squirrely and leave after one year. Even if mommy and daddy are telling you. I'm not saying they are, but that happens a lot. So just uh, stick with it. So I gave Hansberry six, but those freshmen, they'll be fine, but they just got to keep on. Again, listen to the older guys. Learn from the older guys. Um, so that's kind of, I think I went over everybody. Um, also, Sincere Harris, who's red shirting. As soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, he's gone. But maybe not. I hope not, because he's another one that I was kind of watching him out there. And he seems into it. He's, you know, and there's timeouts. He's out there high-fiving, chest bumping, doing all that kind of stuff. So he seems like he's into it. And last year, he seemed like he really liked playing for Underwood. I mean, he played, he's an Underwood's kind of guy. He plays good defense, plays hard. But uh, I, just, I don't know if he just didn't think he was going to get the minutes this year. But um, as soon as I saw he was redshirt, and I was like, okay, he's gone. But I hope not, because he's another guy that, uh, um, Hopefully this year he's just getting stronger, learning, things like that. And next year he can have a bigger role on the team. So that would be nice. So Sincere Harris, hopefully we'll stay. But we that's another one. Who, who knows? Hell, he may know right now he's leaving. Or he may not know yet. He may be undecided. You know, it's just these kids, you never know what the hell they're thinking. So, so anywho, those are my thoughts on the Illinois men's basketball team so far. Uh, remember, it's never as good as it seems. Never as bad as it seems. But... Uh, the old being old and experienced and unselfish so far, I think it should be very encouraging for the Illinois fan base. Uh, and again, this game at Purdue on Friday, big game, big game to see what happens and, uh, go from there. But the ranked, uh, Illinois is ranked ninth in the country right now. Um, will they get Shannon back? Do not know. But, uh, for those of you, that thought the sky was falling whenever he was Lou found out he was suspended. It's not. But for those of you that think, Oh man, we're, we don't need him. We're just as doing without him. Like, nope. You shouldn't think that either. You just keep on plugging until, and then if he comes back, great. If he doesn't, Hey, you're used to, you're getting used to it anyway. So you just do the best you can. So anywho, those are my thoughts on the women's basketball team. Hope you enjoyed it. Going to get back on schedule here. Did not have one the last couple Mondays because of Christmas and new year's, but back on schedule um find the podcast on my website jheath2286.podbean.com apple podcasts spotify iHeartRadio, and on and on and on and on and on itunes uh if you google it just google welcome the heath barn it gives you all of them i will say this though i listen to podcasts and i never ever subscribe or leave comments or like or that kind of stuff but if you can uh, that would be a big help uh, to start to do that. Um, do it on Apple Podcasts. You can, you, can do it on, you can do it on any of them. But um, And then also my social media, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, X. Uh, it's all Welcome to the Heath Barn. Uh, TikTok's at Heath Barn, but my name on there is Welcome to Heath Barn. So and anything, you just Google it, it's all on there. Everything's on there. So uh, I put out things every episode on my social media. So, uh, also I'm going to start recording or I shouldn't say recording videoing these episodes. So that way I can have clips and put the little clips of them on social media as well. But, uh, if you can, you know, like, like those videos and things like that, that I put out on social media too, that'd be great. Um, thank you guys for all your support. We're going to get going here again every Monday and Thursday evening they'll come out um and hey thank you for listening to my illinois men's basketball kind of review i suppose thank you very much for listening to welcome to the heath barn and that's that